So the sides of guitar number 57 are now meticulously flat and square, and so I'm ready to cut the binding channels. I'm using a binding tower system to cut these binding channels, and so the first thing I have to do is load up this guitar body into the carrier. Now the carrier is really just serving as a flat surface so that when we pass the body under the binding tower, under that router, it's not going to be tipping on the body's radius. Because remember, the top and the back are not flat surfaces, they're radiused. So loading the guitar body up into this carrier gives the body a nice flat surface to work off of. And now I'm simply checking the height of the body off of the work table at every corner and setting it so all those heights are about the same and this is what keeps my channels square. The router at this time is of course turned off and unplugged. Don't want to lose your fingers here. So when you're moving the body against the rotation of the bit, there are only certain areas where I can do this without the bit biting into the grain of the wood. And this all has to do with the changing grain direction as you travel around the shape of the body. So first I'll get all the areas where I can push the body against the rotation of the bit, which just has easier handling. And then all the remaining areas are areas that need to be cut as a climb cut, which this just means that you have to be holding the body with dynamic resistance as you're passing it through the bit. You have to be able to catch it when the bit runs ever so slightly. When I get to the end wedge area, I always stop there and skip past it and then back my way over it, climb cutting, because in that direction, the bit is not going to sneak up behind the wedge and either pop it out or severely blow out some of the fibers. This is how you get a nice, clean cut and a nice clean joint at that wedge. And so now at this point, this is where I'm doing the climb cuts. So notice the dynamic resistance or really just the sense of tension in my body as I'm making these cuts. And now I switch the carrier to the other side of the body so I can do the binding cuts on the top now. So I noticed a small little compression mark. I must have bumped the top with the tool at some point or something like that and figured I'd stop and steam that out real quick with a piece of damp cardboard and soldering iron. This is a neat little trick for steaming out dents. In preparation for the soundboard binding cut, since this is a softwood and softwood is liable to leave fuzzy edges, I've wiped on just a little bit of finish around the edges and that finish should help seal the grain and hold it down.
So coming around this part of the route right here, I was actually getting some really bad tear out because the figure gets kind of funky over here, um, which ordinarily on simpler woods wouldn't be, wouldn't really happen or isn't expected to happen if you follow the right precautions. But I'm definitely getting it around this bend, which means because this is a mirror image of this, I will most certainly get the same, have the same issue over here. So what I'm gonna do is just to prevent that, I'm gonna use this grommel to score a line. I'm gonna very carefully set it so that line is exactly where the end of the route will be. And that way the fibers will already be severed before they're cut so they can't tear out. Now I used to use a grommel to always make these marks before routing in order to prevent that tear out. But the truth is most of the time I don't have a problem with the tear out and I actually run more of a risk in making these cuts that I'll make a scored line that is just a hair too far outside of where my binding channel is going to be. And in that case, now I just have a really nasty scored line that is visible right on my top that won't get routed away. So there's sort of a risk there. Um, I know some people will always just score out their binding before they cut it, and that's fine as long as you're extra, extra careful. I just think, um, I just avoid it most of the time if I think I don't need it. In this case, I should have actually done it around this bend um, if I'd been paying a little more attention to how wavy that figure was there. I, um, I think I would have gone for this. And now that's exactly what I'm going to do on this side. So I set the grommel so it's butted up right against the wall of the existing channel. That way it will be exact. Okay. And the area of concern is about right there. So it's really right around here. Now the, this problem over here is just something that uh, a little bit later down the road I'm going to have to deal with unfortunately. Nothing to do about that now, but I can prevent it here. Okay, much better. Much, 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 much better. So here, I'll show you the difference. Look how nasty that is. Very upset about that, honestly. That's the old side. New side, nice and crisp and clean. So, I should have predicted that this wood was going to be more problematic than, um, than I did predict it would be. And I should have taken that extra precaution in this case. Okay, so now this is ready for the actual binding strips. Actually, never mind, this isn't ready for binding. I forgot to mention, we have one more extra thing to do on this since this is a cutaway, and that's to bind this tip before I add the rest of the binding around the edges. So we've got a little bit of a special operation right here which you only need to do if you have a Florentine cutaway like this. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.